love that you say that because that's exactly it. I'm building a relationship, right? Th yeah. This is not something where I'm trying to sell people. You know, mm. and this is not a used car dealership. No. I'm no. here to serve. Hi guys, this is Vinny Chopra back again with another great episode of the podcast and also it becomes shorts and reels, everything. I hope you're liking the content. If you like, you know, this show, please give us five star reviews. We got a great, great friend, Amy. Amy Silvis is here. Thank you, Vinny. I, I have admired you from afar for so long and I didn't think it was possible for anyone to be more smiley than I am. <laughs> But you are, and so we're both just going to jump off at the screen with our smiles, and this is really an honor. I really appreciate you having uh, me. Thank you. Thank you so much. But please tell us, you know, uh, like, who is Amy and how she got, you know, you mentioned a little bit about some medical situation. If you yes. want to, you know, I don't want to tell, uh, please, please yes, tell us. Yes, I'm an open book. So yeah, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Amy Silvis. I'm the founder and principal of Silvis Capital. I am 42 years old. I live out in Los Angeles with my amazing husband, Joel. And not many women maybe mention their age, but I say it proudly and I show my wrinkles and my gray hair because I was born in 1981 with a illness called cystic fibrosis. And my parents were told I would live to be maybe eight or nine years old. So the fact that I'm 42, I'm very, very proud. Every sign of age is a uh, is a victory for me. So yes, I'm an open book. I'm happy to talk about the journey and how it led to real estate and, and all of those great things, Vinny. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Amy, we'll have a great episode. I'm 71. This oh. month, I'll be 71. I'm 1952 oh. born. And you know, it's just the age is just a number. I always say that. And you know, you just shared something very, very special. When you were born, our daughter went to UCLA, love to share with you and with the audience. I don't really talk too much about it, but she got diagnosed aplastic anemia and had a bone marrow transplant, actually. This Me? just happened when she was in the 21 years of age. And oh. now she's fully recovered. I'm so happy to say that she's the bigger winner, the biggest winner in our family, yeah. as a matter of fact. And she works with, you know, she she's a partner in our business yes. with Mo, Monil Brand. Actually, is Monica in the front and Neil, our son, in the right next to it. So Monil is a combination of Monica and Neil. And, uh, you know, so I totally see what you're saying. Any yeah. kind of, you know, uh, medical situation can just put us away. I mean, you know, with all the negativism and everything and what will happen to our life, but we can take charge. And I think I'm just kind of so happy to kind of share that small. I don't talk too much about it. I've talked maybe two, three podcasts in my book, which is Positivity Brings Profitability. In that book, I discuss a little bit. But no, congratulations. I'm so happy you're healthy and, and you're living a life of your dream. That's so wonderful. Thank you. I'm so delighted to hear that your daughter's doing yeah. well. Uh, also, yes. what a blessing. Yeah, Great. it is. It really is, you know, and uh, I mean, you know, it's it's just a big thing. Uh, you know, when things happen in your life, I just totally left all my job, everything. This was 2013, 14, I think. Yeah, right about there, two years. I didn't work at all. And that's when I built the company from scratch again. Second time, Monil Investment Group from the rug or carpet of our apartment in Washington, D.C. We live in California, but we moved there and all that. But let's talk about it. You know, the big thing is everybody listening to us or watching us, please take that into heart. Excuses don't get us anywhere. They don't, you know, and many of us want to do 
help the investors. We want to get the right properties. We want to excel in commercial real estate. So take us through your journey. I mean, how have you done so well so quickly? Yeah. <laughs> You're kind. It actually <laughs> took me 10 long years from the very start. I think you and I came from a, a similar program from when yes. I started to when I bought my first multifamily property. Mm -hmm. um, my health, you know, I used to work in biotech because I have a strong heart, as I'm sure, you know, you and your family yeah. do, to mm -hmm. helping people with who struggle with illness. Yes. And while I was doing that, and then also doing the extensive home care I used to have to do for cystic fibrosis, mm -hmm. I tried to build this real estate business. And unfortunately, I failed several times. And um, so it, it took me 10 long years. And ironically, it wasn't until the pandemic, you can mm -hmm. imagine having a respiratory illness, the pandemic was a bit scary for me, but mm -hmm. it turned out to be an enormous blessing because I had all the time in the world, you know, hermetically sealed in my house <laughs> during 2020. Truly, you know, sometimes these things seem scary, but you can turn them into blessings. And it gave me this incredible opportunity to build the passive income and real estate business of my dreams. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is so great. I mean, a lot of people took the COVID 2020, 19, 2021 as if, you know, boy, nobody wants to do anything, but also thinking that the people are working from home. Husband and wives are there at home, so they could even meet with us on Zoom and talk to us and things like that. You're so right. I mean, raising money was pretty easy, you know, and actually I think I raised 18 or 20 million for my assisted living right there in just two months in two months i remember it's just mind-boggling yeah <laughs> amazing what well, i love that you mentioned zoom because living in los angeles i had no desire to invest in los angeles so yeah. how was i going to develop these broker relationships these relationships mm -hmm. with buyers well suddenly the whole country was open to me because everyone was on zoom so <laughs> speaking to you know potential prospects and all these things over zoom became normal and standard. Good. Yeah. And I didn't miss a beat. So finding the blessings in the difficult times, and I know you talk about this a lot. They're always there. They're yeah. always there. If we look. Yeah. I totally agree with you. I mean, you couldn't you know, agree better because the thing is, there is always silver lining on the dark mm -hmm. cloud. I say that, you know, it's just that situation can just change like this instantly. If yes. you don't delve into the negatives that much and you just say, what's the solution? It's there. It's on my hand. Here, here it is. It's right there. I can see yes. it. But yes. how can we get out of it? You're so right. So right. So mindset is huge. I know I went on your website. You did talk about termite, tenants, and trash, which we probably learned from the same guru. <laughs> you know, so it's so important important that we are able to give these special opportunities to investors. Let's talk about that. So if you were to teach new people how to really get into the circle of good investors and how to close them out, I don't say close is not the right word, but educate them yes. and let them come into your deals, you know, so take us through that journey if you would. Yeah. I love that you say that because that's exactly it. I'm building a relationship, right? Th yeah. This is not something where I'm trying to sell people. You know, mm. I, this is not a used car dealership. No. I'm yeah. here to serve. Yeah. And it's my goal is to provide education and opportunity yeah. and to empower people to decide if I'm right for them. So yeah. the control really is on the investor side. And I think that mindset shift for a lot of people Mm -hmm. is so powerful but releasing a little bit of that control can be intimidating right because mm -hmm. oh i have a deal and i need a certain amount of investors and you know how mm -hmm. do i get them but you use the word attract and i i really want to mm -hmm. emphasize that because that's exactly what it is mm -hmm. people can feel our heart people can tell the energy from the words that we use and our intention so yeah. if we're doing i love the book called the go-giver by bob berg oh, i don't know yes yes yes, yes. yes. So That's if, a great book, yeah. Yes. So if I'm constantly finding ways to add value, to provide mm -hmm. education, everything else takes care of itself. I know you believe the same thing, but totally. it's amazing how the world, it's a law of the universe, right? So that's yeah. the control. 
I love it. I totally love it. You know, the law of abundance, law of attraction, law of superiority, I mean, manifestation, everything. The yes. more you give, the more you get. But you're so right. I think it's such a big feat. A lot of time we want to get investors to buy and sell and buy and sell. No, 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 no. You've got to show them all the best ways. And they, if they trust us, if they see how genuine we are. And one thing I wanted to mention was maybe you have already done it. I've been doing Zoom meetings and maybe let's even say Skype. 14 years back, I started 14, 16. Wow. And, and I would record. I don't know if Skype allowed it, but even WebEx and all them. I would give my investors and I'll take their permission first as I'm giving presentation on a PowerPoint presentation, I will record it and then send it back to them. Very smart. And I still do it. I still do it because I believe if I'm covering several things, they're important, but I know so much about what I'm trying to tell them, yes. but how much will they understand? in that short period of 20, 30 minutes. Mm. So that's when I decided to record the conversation and drop them in a Dropbox and then send them a link so that if the husband saw it and the wife didn't see it, they both can see it again or show it to their pastor, show it to their CPA because everything, sometimes we are f afraid what do we record and where will it go, right? But if we tell them it's for you only, or now I'm doing five or six C's and all that, you know, which we can advertise. So I'm not worried about the webinars and all, but you're right. You know, those kind of small things can help a lot, help a lot. Yes. Um, but take us through, you know, your social media. I mean, I am so impressed. Oh. Your, yeah, how you find time and how you find very enticing, uh, you know, subject matters, let's say that, you know. So give us some tips. Give us some tips. Thank yeah. you. Absolutely. Well, I think the biggest tip I have, and Vinny, you're clearly an expert at this, is empathy. So yes. putting myself in my investors or in my audience's shoes. So it's yeah. not about what am I interested in talking about? It's, yeah. oh, you know, I've talked to investors. I, I've really understood their, their needs, their wants, their fears. So what could I talk about in a LinkedIn post, a social media post that would add value to them and would really speak to them? So I, I write my posts, uh, I batch write them. So once a week I sit down on a Sunday and I think, okay, what value do I want to provide? How can I help people? And it really gives me the ability to come up with ideas, thoughts, you know, and not all of them are perfect. I'll be perfectly honest, mm -hmm, but I do mm -hmm. think the batch writing gets the creativity going and allows me to exhibit that empathy that resonates with investors and just folks that are looking to learn about the space. I love it. I love it. So is there like, have you done some research? I was asking my marketing team, is there a way where I could find out what accredited investors are asking, you know, this time of the year or season or what economy now, you know, stock market is taking a big turn. You know, we got from AAA to AA plus yesterday and market went way down, you yes. know, and so forth. And today is trying to re recover and things like that. So are there any websites maybe, you know, where we could find out what are the accredited investors looking for? Gosh, I wish I had that. I am very <laughs> candid. I do this based on the conversations I have with my investors, what I see on the news. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's really just interacting with, with folks and really listening. I'm mm -hmm. sure like you, when I get on phone calls with folks, I'm mm -hmm. hardly talking. I'm mostly listening, yes. you know, like understanding. Yeah. So if we're actively listening and asking specifically, hey, what are your fears? What are your thoughts? Yeah. And, start to hear patterns. I'm sure exactly like you, but if you find that website, it. let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I sure will. I sure will. But you know, you're so right what you're saying, because we try to dump so much, you know, in the plate of investors. Actually, today, my talk show I do at 9 a.m. every every Thursday, Abundance Mindset with Vinny and Walter. And we were discussing about impeccable speaking words, you know, our words are our 
ammunition or whatever, yes. but we got to make sure that we speak correctly and mm -hmm. make sure that people are understanding what we are trying to tell them. You know, we get paid for communicating the ideas, which mm -hmm. all the CEOs do, by the way, you know, in their companies and everything, the vision they want to portray and the people, if they're not listening, then there is a dysfunction in the yes. organizations and so on. But you're so right. We need to just, you know, try to give as little, I don't know if that's the right word, as little so that the other side, which is some are melancholy, some are, you know, drivers, some are others. We got to just imitate who we are talking to and give it as little or as large amount as they want. Huh? Would you agree? Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more because every person is different, right? How they understand communication, how they like to communicate, um, mm -hmm. what they want from a conversation, even starting from that very basic point of, you know, what's the best way to, to add value during a conversation or, or on a post? Bite-sized yes. pieces of information are often the most valuable. Uh, you're completely right. I I'm guilty at the beginning of fire hosing. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I drink too much caffeine. I talk fast. I can't wait to share all the great information, but that's about me, right? That's about me. So if I'm focused on someone else, especially over Zoom, right? We can read their body language. Are their eyes glazing over? Mm -hmm. Are they mm -hmm. leaning in? Are they nodding their head? You know, all mm -hmm. of these things make such a difference in helping people feel like, oh, we understand you. We're, we're listening. We care. All of those things matter. I love it. I love it. You're so right. So right. I hope everybody listening or watching to us, I hope they're watching us, you know, I hope you're getting some great pointers because the thing is, it's so important what, you know, to reach, to grow our business, uh, of course, you know, in the syndication business that you and I are, and also education, maybe, I don't know if you thought about, you would be a great, great educator too. Maybe you already have, you know, certain ways to educate. Uh, you know, the upcoming syndicators. And now actually I'm even thinking in my classes, uh, the idea is to raise money, how to raise money. But now if the cash flow is not there in multifamily, we are going into buying businesses. Smart. What? Oh my gosh. So we are just saying the real estate is one part of us to get that. The other part is, oh, that's my... My wife is there. Hi there, dear. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. so, so the key thing is you're so right to be able to separate the business because I'm in assisted living now also and in hospitality hotels and all. I really believe that the piece of uh, real estate can be separated from the business side of it. Yes. business side of it. And that way you could even figure out if the money can be raised to buy the business side and bring cash flows. Our main idea for the investors is to provide the cash flow. That's what we are really looking at, yeah. you know, that way. No, it's been such a tremendous, tremendous talk. Can you say any last nuggets you can think of or anything to the audience and how can they reach you? That's the other sure. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to leave with a final word of encouragement. You know, mm -hmm. I was not given a great prognosis as a young person, but if mm -hmm. I'm able to follow my dreams, anyone else can. Yeah. Sometimes setbacks in life are the portal through which our dreams can come true. So mm -hmm. keep going. Please be encouraged. And just know I'm cheering everybody on, just as I'm sure Vinny is as well. Yes, 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 <laughs> and yes. Reach me at sylvuscapital.com. It's a weird spelling last name, but I'm sure Vinny will put the note yes. in the comments. Yes. And then find yep. me on LinkedIn too. I'd love to connect. Ah, that's so kind. Thank you so much, Amy, for hanging out with me and really giving great nuggets. And God bless you. I'm so glad you're doing well and all the prosperity to you. Thank you so much. Thank this you. This was an honor. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you.